four years ago, a NASA spacecraft launched from our coast and went on a far out mission. Ever since it reached the asteroid Bennu, it's been feeding information about the asteroid. The end goal is to bring a Bennu sample back to Earth and we're just weeks away from a milestone. And one of the names leading the research is UCF professor Umberto Campins. Right now, he has been given the opportunity to get his students directly involved in the mission while carrying out research. I recently had a chance to catch up with the professors about recent findings and the latest on the sample collection. Why don't you tell us about the latest on the OSIRIS-REx mission? Well, the OSIRIS-REx mission is scheduled to go down to asteroid Bennu, the surface of Bennu, and pick up a sample uh, in October. And before that, we've done two rehearsal maneuvers to go down onto this really close to the surface and check out all of our systems. And we wanted to do these maneuvers and, and rehearse the approach because we, has, we had to implement a new method of navigation for the spacecraft so that it would autonomously make decisions on which areas were too dangerous and how was the best way to navigate down to the surface because the surface is a lot rockier than we expected. Yeah, so, so what did you learn from those rehearsals? Well, first of all, that the, the spacecraft is navigating very well and we were able to fine tune the place on the surface where we want to pick up our sample. And we learned some uh, additional information, which is the site that is called, we, we named Nightingale, mm -hmm. uh, on the surface of the asteroid. All of the asteroid surface features are named after birds, either natural or mythical. And because Bennu is the name of a bird from the Egyptian mythology. Okay. And uh, so we chose Nightingale as our, as our sample site and it because it looked like it was going to have the best sampleable material, the material that would be easiest for our sampling mechanism to pick up and put into the capsule and bring it back to Earth. And these two rehearsals have confirmed that indeed that crater, that area has the, the finest material on the asteroid. So we, we, are, we are encouraged by that. And we're also very encouraged by how well the spacecraft took over. It was not, it was not being sent um, instructions from Earth. It was navigating by itself. So it said, okay, this is rock and this rock over here and that created over there. And so it, it, it determined the best way to descend so that if it had continued, it would have sampled the area that we want to. So we're very excited because this is the most critical time on our mission. And uh, hopefully by the end of October, we will have that sample and we will be able to measure how much of that material we, we collected. And then in early 2021, we're gonna be starting back to Earth to deliver that wow. sample. How has the pandemic affected how you've been working? I know you've relocated since the last time yes. we did the video. I, I relocated, I am now in Tucson, Arizona, in part so that I would not have to be traveling back and forth between Orlando and Tucson. And I've been here. Um, so that I could work more closely with the colleagues here, uh, use certain computers that you can only use, you know, uh, uh, in person here, and um, and be part of this and not miss the sampling maneuver. In other words, not miss the most important part of the mission. And at the same time, I uh, was able to do this while continuing to teach in Orlando because I'm teaching remotely because a great deal of the classes from uh, UCF are, are being done remotely. So in a way, the pandemic allowed me to both carry out my research and involve my students in the real-time experience of having somebody in the team, updating them all the time. And it, the class is on asteroids, comets, and meteorites. It turns out that what we're discovering about the asteroid is a, it's much more interesting than the, we expected. There are a few things that... I can't talk about yet until the end of September when there are some publications that will be out. Uh, but um, And that's mainly because the, the journals that where these publications will be coming out uh, have asked us not to discuss these things publicly until the papers are published. But this asteroid is a lot more interesting than we anticipated. We're going to be learning about it and about asteroids in general, about the formation of our solar system, specifically about the formation of planets like Earth and how... Uh, water and organic molecules may have been delivered to Earth by asteroids, and that allowed the formation of life here on Earth, which we still don't understand. 
And as you may have gathered there, he said that there were a lot of surprises with some of the overall findings so far. So he's very eager to get that sample back because he anticipates more surprises. And by the way, once that sample is collected, it will take two years to get back because that's when the orbits will line up appropriately for the return trip. I feel like it's been like a baby and like, you know, we're yes. seeing it grow and learning, you know, its mm -hmm. personalities and what it has and what it doesn't have. So it's, it's amazing. And it's more questions, more answers to yeah. come, hopefully, yeah. with all of that. Yeah. Just keep the asteroids away from us. Right? That's exactly. all I ask. Kim. <laughs>